Hello, everybody. I'm Brad Parkinson, and welcome to the Planet Health Project. This is episode 21. We're doing it on anxiety. I'm joined with my friend in wellness, Mr. Shannon Burford. How are you, Shannon? Hi, everyone. Hi, Brad. Uh, doing really well on this cold Perth morning. Cold Perth morning. I don't it think is. it's as cold as the Sydney morning I had. <laughs> Definitely not as cold as what they're getting in Melbourne. Um, no. So we're doing anxiety today, Shannon, and it's very relevant at this time. It's uh, everyone's very anxious with the sign of the, it's, 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 it's kind of this uh, permanent state with the sign of the times with what's going on in the world. Mm. Um, so it's a topic that we um, know very well because we deal with it on a daily basis really in clinic. Mm. So um, I'm excited to hear your take on it all uh, and uh, let's get started and, and perhaps we will we'll, um, talk about um, what is anxiety and um, you know what, what are some examples of anxiety? Yeah, it can vary a lot. Um, I mean, pretty sure um, you've experienced a bit, I've experienced a bit, most people have, and it's normal to feel some level of anxiety, uh, but not continuously, not every day. So it can vary a lot. Uh, there might be mild cases where people feel in control, where they just, they know there's this strange feeling inside bubbling up, maybe some um, sweaty palms or heart palpitations, they've had a coffee or something, right up to extreme panic where there's an inability to breathe, um, a full-on panic attack where um, the hormones are buzzing around the body, stress hormones, and people just completely overwhelmed and they can't breathe or they feel like they're going to die or impending doom or um, they're hypervigilant. Right, right now, there's a lot of that with coronavirus. Um, there are some people that are focusing a lot on that and becoming overthinking, wearing a mask, have I washed my hands? Um, and, and then it could be affecting sleep, it could be affecting energy, a whole range of symptoms. Mm. Yeah, look, um, there is that, just, you can distinguish generally about it, uh, like an anxiety that's um, a, a common thing. And I think a lot of people are feeling it on, in some level. Then mm where it can be what what we consider a generalized anxiety disorder gad um where it's just it's constantly dealing with it and then to take it to another extreme you can look at um, chemical imbalances and maybe what's causing those as well um where even even when we do certain behavioral changes to bring down that anxiety or lifestyle changes the chemical imbalances keep driving it whether it's um toxic from the toxins from the gut or whatever uh and um what are some of the risk factors we we need to be watching out for yeah so um there seems to be a genetic link so if there is a predisposition for anxiety in the family um parent has it or a sibling um there's a higher chance of a person to develop it and there's that talk of the A-type personality, um, stress, so um, continuous stress in workplaces. So for example, if you're a police officer or a prison warden or similar, and you're expected to function at a high level of vigilance, um, it could start to um, affect you. And traumatic experience, so it could have been something in childhood or current or relationships or something where it has triggered the stress and then uh, the, the neurotransmitters have calibrated to be more uh, hyperactive. And that HPA axis with the adrenal and the cortisol and the adrenaline pumping Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're the main, the main risk factors, but anybody um, can really get anxiety. Um, I guess just the, the level of external influence pushing that. And I'll just explain also, there's the neurotransmitters basically on a spectrum uh, where we've, we can be very suppressed and uh, be sleeping and anxiety generally is um, the fear of the future, of the future events not happening or what may happen in the future. Not always, but um, generally there's a focus on what could happen, what will happen tomorrow. And the neurotransmitters are down-regulating like uh, GABA 
and melatonin and uh, calming the body down. And then there's overstimulation. So it's uh, ideally in the middle. So we should have a little bit of anxiety to run away from the tiger. But then we should calm down as well. So people are calibrated to be in a, a more heightened state. Mm. And then it remains constant. Yep. Like that, that sympathetic dominant sort yeah. of state where, and um, where, where we often find poor digestive function accompanying that because of that switch over to the sympathetic nervous system and not, not the parasympathetic nervous system doing what it should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, just on, the, you mentioned HPA axis. So just for those listening, it's um, um, hypothalamus and pituitary are in, in their brain and they, that controls the um, adrenals, like you mentioned, um, and in, uh, controlling the release of cortisol. Mm. Um, which is our stress hormone, uh, which has a, a, a lot of different effects on the body, including thinning out our mucosal layer and making mm. us more reactive to different foods and, and um, which can then feed into worse sy symptoms of anxiety as well. Uh, but it also controls um, the H uh, hypothalamus and pituitary also control the thyroid, um, uh, which controls our metabolism in our body. And uh, quite often when we're anxious that that can be in overdrive or people that are pushing themselves and stressed um, that can be overdrive in overdrive so and um, it, it controls the hormones the um, ovaries um, or the gonads in men so it's when that stress it, when stress is impacting us it directly affects that axis that hpa axis mm. um, or hpo axis or hpt being the thyroid uh, and um, all those things can really be out of whack and um, contribute mm. more to um, in increased anxiety uh, as well. Mm. It's really okay. a, a beautiful system where um, the, co the complex process is in the body, beautifully designed where it wants you to go back to the cave and rest. And yet we have our phone and our artificial lights mm. and our work and we maintain that, but our body keeps down regulating. Go back, down regulating the thyroid, go back to the cave and rest, rest, get away from this danger. But yeah. uh, in our society, we just keep powering ahead and going to work. And uh, well, on that, on yeah. that note, yeah. Shannon, do you want to elaborate a bit on some of the dietary and lifestyle um, treatments or um, contributing factors that we can uh, look at to um, get back into balance and reduce the anxiety? Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, we often say, oh, it's very complex and there's multi multiple factors playing in on it and it, it's not going to change. But um, if we think of that snowball growing and the anxiety starts and then that affects our sleep and that affects our um, energy and that affects our diet, obviously. So uh, we, we will be craving if we do have anxiety, we will be stressed and we might be eating more sugar and we um, we'll be having less sleep and we'll be feeling more fatigued and that snowball just keeps on growing. And uh, so there's involves more factors. So particularly diet, um, alcohol, it, it will make it worse. So unfortunately, um, many people self-medicate because that's that initial um, relaxation or fogging of the anxiety. And people may get into the habit of um, having a drink to try and numb the anxiety but in the long mm -hmm. run it's really going to make it worse uh, because it's negative impact on the b vitamins and the liver and the dehydration and more likely to impede the quality of the sleep and so trying to try and eliminate the alcohol uh, try and get the blood sugar levels more stable um not yeah, that's fluctuating. A big one, isn't it? yeah because when we get that spike high it's going to catapult the uh, the um the spike in the insulin and then the mm. sugar levels will spike and it'll give us that initial rush but then we'll crash um then the protein is really super important so in the most of the neurotransmitters are made up with a backbone of um, amino acids for example serotonin is has a component of uh, tryptophan so as we eat the proteins they break down in our gut we use cofactors and we manufacture our neurotransmitters so keeping the protein at a good high level which mm -hmm. is uh, which is around about a gram 
per kilogram of body weight, but could be lower, could be higher, depending on your your personal situation. Uh, and I think that's about all with diet. Can you add anything, Brad? Blood sugar um, alcohol. No. Yeah, I look the, and on the blood sugar thing too. And you know, you you quite often will ramp up with um, uh, on that peak that that sugar boost can really contribute to the anxiety. And also, also it's altering the microbiome at the same time as well. So mm -hmm. um, we've got to keep that in mind because we now know there's specific uh, bacteria that can be beneficial. Um, uh, and they're doing more and more clinical trials on these types of bacteria that can actually help with anxiety. Mm. So there's definitely a direct connection there. Um, and you mentioned serotonin uh, as well as um, uh, even GABA and everything too. Mm. We know that um, the nutrients that we need for those uh, neurotransmitters. And um, just to clarify, serotonin really puts us in that happy state. And, and GABA is a neurotransmitter inhibitor. inhibitor. So it, um, it inhibits that excitatory state. Whereas uh, glutamates, um, things like MSG, mm. your yeast extracts, and um, other, other flavor enhancers will often be excitatory. Uh, and um, people often don't pick those things up in their diet as well. And um, yeah, we need to be absorbing the right nutrients, creating a lot of GABA. You know, we often say no zinc, no GABA. Um, uh, you know, that's one thing. And on that note too, um, do you know specific nutrients that um, we um, want to give for these patients and what, what they might be lacking in, in, in regards to very specific nutrients? Oh, for the GABA, um, you mentioned earlier about the gut and the, the mucosa membrane. So we're thinking about glutamine. Yep. Uh, and the zinc and the B6. Um, are you thinking about more about the question about the GABA or? Just no, in, re in regards to what are some of key nutrients um, and herbs to help out with um, the uh, anxiety specifically? Oh, there's so many, Brad. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the key nutrients. So we want to go down to, we want to go talk about magnesium and yep. um, the herbs like kava, passion flower, chamomile, lemon balm, iron, B12. Um, there's so many. But uh, maybe if we go back to the basics of the gut and the yep. neurotransmitters and the absorption of the proteins, yep. um, a lot of maybe drinking chamomile tea, uh, lemon balm, um, being sure that sure the diet is quite clean, as we mentioned, so limiting mm -hmm. the sugars. Um, and then probably putting in a magnesium powder um, with a few other cofactors like selenium and zinc and some bees in there is quite a simple yeah. one. Um, and really trying to manage that small intestinal overgrowth or the dysbiosis, the changes in the bacteria. And often yeah. when people will have anxiety, will, they will have that bloating and uh, IBS and maybe even diarrhea or fluctuation between constipation. Yep. So I hope quite I quite often that you're quite often that inflammatory picture too, isn't it? We mm. we um, hearing a lot more about neuroinflammation with uh, mood disorders as well, and um, that can play into anxiety too, and can be mm. one of the missing key factors of, of treatment. Um, and look with a, with the gut work, it is a big one, and you need to get the gut right before you um, can successfully treat mood disorders and especially anxiety and um yeah we do have other videos on that so um, people can refer to those and um mm. i would suggest they do if they want to try and get on top of their anxiety um also they can come and see a practitioner like you and i and um really be guided through um all of this these treatments as well um okay what about some um golden steps to start to help the situation if we where, where can some where can an individual start to um, work on or what can they start to work on to really help them deal with their anxiety? Yeah, I think maybe the first step that people out there should think about is do a little bit of functional testing. So there oh, okay. are, um, yep. yeah, there are a few tests that you could find really helpful. Um, one that's been around for about five, 10 years is the pyrrole disorder. It's often mm -hmm. talked about the zinc deficiency so either people putting in the zinc or testing do they have that pyrrole disorder the mo factor um, hair yep. testing is always helpful just to see where your minerals are stool testing could be helpful 
um, mm -hmm. and then genetic things. Um, some people really like to do genetic tests and uh, one that is a piece of the puzzle, the full puzzle is the MTHFR and yep. the, the one related to the folate um, and ruling out hyperthyroidism. So you might be overactive thyroid um, and that could be causing the anxiety. So golden steps, um, number one, do some functional testing just to see with yep. what you're dealing with. Um, number two is probably I touched on add a magnesium powder. Um, mm -hmm. It's quite helpful for so many conditions, but because the mm. powders are often in a blend, not just magnesium, you're getting a few of those cofactors like a multivitamin. And then yep. number three, um, probably uh, meditation, mindfulness, all that. Uh, I love the triangle breathing. Have you heard of that, Brad? The, no, this is this is new to me. What um, What's uh, the triangle breathing? Yeah, I'm sure you probably have a different name for it, but um, imagining a triangle and each side is two, 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 and it's for two minutes, two in the mm -hmm. middle, and you breathe in, you hold, and you breathe out in oh. hold and out and you just focus yep. on the triangle for mm -hmm. count of two count of two count of two for two minutes it's guaranteed i'm going to say guaranteed that your mm -hmm. anxiety will vanish after focusing on breathing for two minutes well it makes sense it's because I'm, I'm often recommending yoga um, or meditation and that's really all about breath work so mm. um, you know it, it is it's a huge one and even just doing a small amount through you know even if it's once or twice a week or one little yoga session or something can can have some benefits it, it, you know you don't have to beat yourself up if you can't get get to it every day um, but it, it is very powerful stuff um, anything to do with breathing and anything that brings you back into the the moment the present day and, and you're not worrying about the future or worrying about the mm. past um, and i think breathing is one of those key things that um can help with that and whether you you're not a big fan of yoga or meditation or sitting down doing a breathing exercise you know doing your sports um you know whether it's you swimming or um running or something where you have to really regulate your breathing um that can be another way of doing it and often when people can't do the other things um like, like meditation then yeah, we, we look at what sports they could be doing or just exercise. It doesn't have to be competitive sport or anything, um, but something where you are regulating your breathing, uh, preferably on a daily basis. But even if it's once a week, you'll still get some benefit from doing that. Mm, so definitely. That's, that's great. And, and not All a right. quick fix as well. It's a calibration. Mm. So keeping at it. Yep. Yeah, and that's great. And yeah, look, I, I wasn't thinking of the, the, the testing there, and you've made some really good points there with the testing and, you know, doing microbiome testing, um, you know, looking for heavy metals and hormones and th thyroid, which we mentioned uh, in relation to the HPA axis um, earlier on, is very important to see where that's at. Um, because if they've got something like Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroidism, um, and that's an autoimmune condition, then there's a whole other area of treatment that needs to be dealt with. Um, so that's excellent, Shannon. Thanks for all those tips. Um, do you have any closing remarks in regards to anxiety? Uh, not, no, just stay No, I calm think you said and... it all. I think you covered so much. <laughs> um, well, thanks for that, Shannon. And where can everyone find you if they're trying to chase you up? I'm over here in Perth, uh, Cura Medicine, C-U-R-A medicine.com.au. And how about you, Fantastic. Brad? Everyone can find me here in Sydney, in um, just at the base of the Blue Mountains I operate from in Glenmore Park here. Uh, and uh, you can find me online, um, uh, bradparkinson.com.au or Brad Parkinson Naturopath. Uh, usually I'll come up as number one there and you'll um, find out all my details and they can book in for an appointment. So thanks again, Shannon. And um, hopefully uh, we'll get to do this again very soon. Mm. Love these talks. And you, um, we'll speak speak again soon see you later yeah thank you see you everyone bye